we're talking about faith and prayer, and last week we were talking about looking not at the things that are seen. You can open your Bibles to John chapter 6 tonight, but I'm going to read a couple of verses of review. 2 Corinthians 4.18, the King James Version, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we have to look not at the things which are seen because they're temporary, but we have to look at the things which are unseen, which are eternal. And of course, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we were talking about last week how the Word of God tells us that which is not seen. And that's why the Word of God is so important. And that's why we need to meditate and focus on the promises of God. And we were discussing, okay, so we're not walking by what we see, so how do we act? How do we live? And we have to stand on the Word. Tell your neighbor, say, you need to stand on the Word. And the word gives us assurance. The word gives us assurance of his promises and the word gives us assurances of when we take action, the results we can expect. I said the word gives us assurances of when we take action, the results that we can expect. So when we do certain things in obedience, to the word of God, in obedience to the Holy Spirit of God, we can expect certain results. And in John chapter six, verse 23, it says, in that day you will no longer ask me anything, because he was preparing his disciples, they had been with him, and they were asking him for all kinds of things. And you know, uh, just reading through the gospels, you know, as you read through the gospels several times, um, they weren't afraid to ask God for things. Let me rephrase that. They weren't afraid to ask Jesus for things. They asked him for things all the time. You know, this whole concept of not going to God and asking him for anything, read the Gospels and see. They even asked him if they could sit at the right hand of the throne. I mean, they were not, they were not concerned about asking Jesus because they had Jesus right there with them. And so Jesus says to them, he's preparing them because he's gonna go, he's gotta go to the throne, you know, he's gonna get crucified, resurrected, and sit at the right hand of the, th the throne of the Father God. So he's getting them prepared. And so he's telling them, in that day you will no longer ask me anything, I tell you the truth, my Father, who? My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Whatever you ask in my name. Everybody say, whatever I ask. In his, in his name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will believe. Ask, and you will receive. Ask, and you will receive. Receive, and your joy will be what? Complete. Complete. So I have asked the Father in Jesus' name, and so now I'm thanking him that his word cannot fail. I'm thanking him that his word cannot fail. I'm thanking him that I've taken action on the word, I'm standing on the word, and his word doesn't fail. So turn over to Philippians chapter four, and if you're new to Christianity, if you're new to the ministry, if you're new to really studying your Bible, or maybe you have been around the word of God for a while, Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven, is a scripture that you need to get in your spirit, man. So I would highly recommend that you meditate on this scripture. I would highly recommend you don't just gloss over this scripture. I would highly recommend that you confess this scripture daily and confess it not just once but several times because this scripture right here tells us how, everybody say how, how, how I can walk by faith and not by sight. I love that about the Bible. The Bible doesn't just tell you what you should do, but it tells you how you can do it. And in Philippians chapter four, verse six, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, 
present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So let's look at this. Verse, start, start verse six. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. Everybody say, remember we're talking about not tolerating the curse. So we're not gonna be anxious about anything. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm done being anxious. I'm done being anxious. Look at your other neighbor, say, you should be done with being anxious. <laughs> now, if you're looking at your spouse, be really careful when you do that. But we're not supposed to be anxious. Why should I be anxious? Isn't he my father? Don't I know him? Didn't he say that he would look after my needs? And whatsoever I ask in Jesus' name, he will give it to me. Isn't that what he said? So therefore, I'm not anxious. I'm not anxious. All right, hold your place there in Philippians chapter four. Let me give you a couple of verses to build on that. Romans chapter eight, verse 32. He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. He did not spare his own son. He did not even spare his own son. He did not even spare his own son. Meditate on that. He did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also? Oh, there's more? Everybody say, there's more? There's more. Yeah. He, how will he not also, along with him, who's him? Jesus. Graciously give us all things. Praise the Lord. Amen. There ought to be a little more excitement tonight about that promise. Amen. 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 I mean, think about that. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? I mean, that sounds like Matthew 6, Seek first his kingdom as righteous, and all these things will be added unto you. So how, if that's the case, if that's the case, that not only did he give us his son, Jesus Christ, but along with him, he graciously gives us all things, how do I have any right to be anxious? No. I have no right to be anxious. I have no right to be anxious at all. So you can't let things disturb you. You can't let things disturb you. What do you mean, things disturb you? What you see. You can't let it disturb you. You gotta be calm. You gotta have the peace of God. You can't be anxious. Why are, are we disturbed by sickness? Why are we disturbed by sickness? Why are we disturbed by sickness? It shouldn't make us anxious. Why? Because we know what to do. Tell your neighbor, say, I know what to do. <laughs> right? People, we have his word, we know him, right? We have his word, but we also know him. We know his character. We know who he is not just in our own lives, but we know who he has been in the past and we know he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's not just lip service, right? We really believe that, right? All right, so we know him, so we ought to know that he cannot fail us, his word cannot fail us. And people seem to think that walking by faith means that you're never gonna be challenged. But that's not the truth. Psalm chapter 34, verse 19, King James Version. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but, everybody say, but, but. the Lord delivered him out of them all. The Lord delivered him out of how many of them? All. How many of them? All. all. It says this in the New Testament, I didn't bring the reference tonight, but Paul talks about how we're hard, we're hard pressed, but we're not destroyed. In other words, there, we walk through life just like everybody else walks through life. But there's a big difference. We're walking by faith and not by sight. Everybody say, I'm gonna walk by faith and not by, not by sight. Didn't Jesus say in Mark 16, verse 18, they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will recover. They will recover. Everybody say... Everybody says, say, we lay our hands on the sick, on the sick. And, they and they will recover. They will recover, right? 
we know when we take certain actions, we get certain what? Results. But what if it's somebody else? What if I can't get to them? Well, John chapter 16, verse 23, which we read, and that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. So we can lay hands on people, sure. But what if they're not right, if, what if they're not right next to us? Well, then we can just pray a prayer of faith. So it doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the circumstance. There's a way to get it done. I said there's a way to get it done. So do we need anything more? This is why he says in Jeremiah chapter one, verse 12, the Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, I love this verse. You have seen correctly, for I am watching. I am what? Watching. What is he doing? Watching. I am watching to see my, that my word is fulfilled. He is watching to see that his word is what? fulfilled. The King James Version says, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I hasten my word to perform it. I hasten my word to what? Yeah. Perform it. He's not watching to see who's the biggest complainer. He's not watching to see who's, who's got the most emotional response. He's watching to perform his what? His word. So this is why if you were to hear me pray, a lot of what I'm praying is I'm praying the word of God. A lot, of what, a lot of my time is spent confessing the word of God. Why are you confessing the same scriptures every day? Because that's what he performs. I said, that's what he performs. Well, if that's what he's watching over to perform it, then it behooves me to get the word in my heart, in my mind, and in my mouth, and put it everywhere I can. Because that is what he's watching to perform. Everybody say, God is watching to perform his word. How about this, Luke chapter one, verse 37. For nothing is impossible with God. I can't wait for guys night, amen? Everybody say, nothing is impossible with God. The American Standard Version says this, how about this? It says Luke 1, 37. For no word from God shall be void of power. Isn't that awesome? No word from God shall be void of what? Everybody say, no word of God shall be void of power. That's why we speak the word. That's why it's about the word, the word, the word, and then guess what it's about? The word. And that's why we're not backing off. The word, the word, the word, the word, the word. You come in here next week, that's what we're gonna be talking about. The word, the word, the word, the word. Well, man, I, Aaron, I've heard Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven, my, you know, for years now. Well, okay, let's say it again, so maybe this time you'll actually do it. Right? And how many of y'all know every day brings new challenges of its own? Right? So Philippians four, six, and seven, do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. With what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. All right, so we're not supposed to be anxious about anything, but in everything. How many things? Everything. How many things? Everything. But in everything, by prayer and what? Petition. That's a request. It's a written request. Petition. With what? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. So we come to God with thanksgiving. Like me even just saying these verses tonight, man, my spirit, man, is so excited and so happy and so grateful. How many y'all grateful for Romans 8 where he says, along with him, he graciously gives us all things. How many y'all thankful for that? Amen. How many y'all thankful for the fact that he says in his word that nothing is impossible with God? Right, So when we come to God, we're not wringing our hands, we're not worried, we're not anxious. We come to God, we're coming to him. Everybody say, we're going to him. Going to him. Right, we're going to him with prayer and what? Petition. With what? Thanksgiving. So we're not going up to him and saying, God, this is what I need. 
Now bring it to me. I wouldn't approach God that way. Would you approach God that way? No, no, no. I highly recommend you don't approach God that way, right? Thank you, Father God. I'm so grateful that you said in your word, you said in your word that by your stripes I have been healed. So I come before you, Lord, and my body has to respond. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried. But I'm coming to you, Lord. And I'm saying to you, Lord, tonight, tonight, I believe and I receive from what your word has said. And I want you to know, Lord, I'm so grateful for the blood of Jesus that makes me whole. I'm so grateful, Lord God, for your awesome, not just the power that you have, but the willingness you have to allow that power to change my life and affect my life, and affect my family's life. See, when you come to God that way, you're not coming to God, wringing your hands, saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. You know, oh God, please, oh God. You know, and I, I, I know I bring this up a lot, but I can't, I, I can't stand it when, you know, on Spotify they have certain algorithms. So whenever you listen to certain things, they'll come up with like daily mixes, and so, you know, I have, a, I have several different playlists. I have a playlist of, of worship songs over the years. You know, some of it, you know, you can only do so many songs in church services, right? So some of them are maybe really good songs, but we'd, it, w- it wouldn't really fit a church service or maybe it wouldn't really fit where we are right now. So in other words, but I got a list. I got a list, and over the years it grows, grows, grows. So anyway, so I'm listening to the Daily Mix today that they threw on there, and oh my gosh, next Next, next, next. Because everybody's singing about their hurt and their pain. My goodness. My goodness, are we Christians or not? Did Jesus die for us or not? Right? But I mean, it's like they're, 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 they're singing about the problem, they're singing about the hurt, they're singing about all those things. But that's not what God is watching to perform. God is watching for somebody who's gonna stand up and say, thank you, Father God, I believe your word, I believe what you have said, I believe what you have done, and I receive it in my life. And God, I want you to know that I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for it, Lord. I'm so thankful for it. Amen? See, when we meditate upon his word and assimilate his word, we cannot help but be thankful. We cannot help but be thankful. When we meditate upon his word and assimilate his word, we cannot help but praise him. See, the more words you get into you, the more you can't help but be thankful. So this current sickness or impossible financial situation simply gives him another opportunity to reveal himself as our Father and Jesus as our Lord and provider. Now listen, listen. This is so important. And a few years ago, you know, when Pastor was talking about, he, he he was going on vacation, I believe, or he was going to San Francisco and he grabbed the book, Oral Roberts, The Miracle of Seed Faith. And then he came back and said, everybody, you got to read this. So I was obedient and I read it, right? And it's actually one book that I I read it once a year. And so, and there's something that Oral Roberts talks about that goes exactly with this about not being anxious. Because when we face challenges, what most Christians do is they freak out. They freak out. All right, and here's what Oral Roberts says about having a need, about having a need. Anybody here have any needs? I do, right? Okay. He he talks about how that his mindset got changed on this. He said, Jesus looked on need differently. Most people today see their needs and become negative. Often they say, why? Why has this happened to me? Or what have I done to deserve it? Right? I mean, most people get wrapped up and why is it happening, all right? 
Jesus looks on a need in the most positive way. To him, to Jesus, to him, a need exists to be met. To Jesus, a need in your life is not something to discourage and make you negative. It is a legitimate claim you have upon his limitless resources to be met in fully provided you plant your seed first. So Jesus doesn't look at needs and freak out. Jesus doesn't look at needs or desires and get anxious. Because he knows that all you have to do is take action, and when you take action, the word's gonna come to pass. In other words, the moment you face, in, no, in other words, the moment your need faces you, and you are into giving and receiving, God shall supply promise goes into effect, all right? I have a need, but guess what? I'm also a giver. And God cannot fail. And giving cannot fail. Everybody say, giving to the kingdom of God cannot fail. This is something you need to know and get positive about. No need should intimidate or bully you. No need should intimidate or bully you. If Christ is first in your life and you're giving to him, you are in connection. You are plugged in. God is answering. You should be expecting what a difference this makes in your attitude. And then he says, a need exists to be met and a desire exists to be fulfilled. Everybody say, a need exists to be met and a desire exist to be fulfilled. Exist to be fulfilled. Say that one more time. Say, a need exists to be met and a desire exists to be fulfilled. So I put that on my calendar, so every month I rewrite that, man. A need exists to be met. As a matter of fact, I also put it in my daily confession. I say it every day. A need exists to be met. A desire exists to be fulfilled. So when I come against a challenge or I come against something that appears to be a shortfall, it's not because I don't walk by what I see. I walk by what is unseen. And what is unseen is, is I've got a ton of seeds out there that are growing and 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 growing. And we, you know, I've learned this from Pastor Gene and Sue. This is just another opportunity to prove that the word of God is true. Amen. So I don't get anxious. I don't get anxious. I don't get anxious. I'm calm, cool, calm and cool. Why do you need to be calm and cool? Because when you're calm and cool, you make the right decisions. When you're anxious and worried, you make dumb decisions. You make dumb decisions. So I'm, man, I'm, I'm calm, I'm cool, right? Now, I'm not telling you I'm perfect at this, I'm not telling you that I've got this under control completely and totally. I'm telling you that, like we talked about on Sunday, you gotta train yourself to be godly, right? Well, godly men and women don't get anxious. So you feel something in your body, don't you dare get anxious. Tell your neighbor, say, don't you dare get anxious. You just go to the Lord and you stand on his promise and you thank him that it is done, that it is done, it is done. And then you let him know how grateful you are that he has provided your healing and how grateful you are that he has said in his word that you can be healed, that you are healed, that you have been healed. Amen? Amen. Amen. So listen, we all get them. We get the bills. I mean, you ever tried to buy tires re recently? <laughs> Remember when tires used to be four for $100? If you see a special for four tires for $100, do not get them, please. Do not get them. Yeah, something is amiss, right? Something is amiss. Something is amiss. And look, you know, I mean, we, went, we just went through this with my oldest son. He just, he just bought a home. He's about to get married. He bought a house. Praise the Lord. 
Thank you for your enthusiasm and encouragement for my son. Don't be jealous. Don't be envious. But you know, I mean, you face the interest rates. You face this. You face that. You can't get anxious. Because whatever the need is, Jesus has met it. Whatever the desire is, Psalm 103, don't forget his benefits. One of his, one of his benefits is he fulfills your desires with good things. With what? Good things. With good things. So how do you look not at what you see around? How do you not get anxious? How do you stay calm? How do you, how do you keep a clear mind about it? Well, you don't see it as the end of the world. Amen. You don't see it as the end of the world. You know, people see needs and they, all they see is their life falling apart. You don't even, that, that, that's fear. Everybody say, that's fear. that's fear. We don't walk by fear in this church. We walk by what? Faith. faith. We walk by faith. I mean, they admitted it now that all those masks and the social distancing had no science behind it whatsoever. They made it up. They made it up. And how they die? If you get within six feet of people, man, you're going to die. And then if you protest that, they're like, oh, you want to kill other people? Is that what you, I mean, I mean, fear, fear, fear. We all lived through it, didn't we? Everybody's six foot, and then you go to, the, you know, man, there's something magical about plexiglass. <laughs> because somehow plexiglass had this unbelievable COVID fighting, apparently, because, you know, putting up things in between between booths, you know. I mean, it, it was just all dumb. Tell your neighbor, say it was all dumb. And why did people fall for it? Because of fear. People were anxious. People were fearful. Don't be anxious about anything. If we never have a need, we would never know the riches of his grace. If we never have a need, we would never know the riches of his grace. Aren't you glad? that he wants to show up and he wants to make Faith Christian Center an example to this society today that he is alive, he is real, and he has made his promises and he fulfills his promises. Amen. This is exciting. Everybody's turned over and said, this is exciting. exciting. This is an exciting time, amen? amen? And guess what? We have a need right now. We want to build faith too. But guess what? Guess what? Guess what? He's going to fulfill it. Amen. I said he's going to fulfill it. Amen. The question is, are you going to be one he's going to fulfill it through, or are you going to stay on the sidelines? Amen? I want to be the one that he helps fulfill it through. Amen? Because he's going to do it. I said he's going to do it. Amen. Amen? So crazy as it sounds, we thank him for even, we thank him, for every added burden that comes, for it gives him an opportunity to reveal himself to our, to our hearts as our Father. It reveals who he is. Don't freak out at a need. What? Look at the next verse. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So how do I look not, Aaron, at circumstances, and how do I look at the unseen, the eternal? Well, is it true? Well, the word of God is true. Is it noble? How many of y'all know the kingdom of God is noble? Is it right? How many know the word of God's right? Is it pure? How many know the word of God is pure? Is it lovely? Oh my goodness, how many all know the word of God is awesome? 
Is it admirable? If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Everybody say, I'm going to think about whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, whatever is excellent, or whatever is praiseworthy. Tell your neighbor, say, that's what I'm thinking about. Look at each other and say, I don't know what you're thinking about, but that's what I'm thinking about. So look, I mean, a, a need comes, an unmet bill comes, man, you don't, mm -mm, mm -mm. what's true, what's right, what's admirable, what's lovely, because here's what happens. Philippians 4, 7, the Weymouth uh, translation says, and then, everybody say, and then. and then. What's then? When you pray this way, what? By prayer and petition, with what? With what? When you pray this way, what happens? And here's what happens. The peace of God, which transcends all our powers of thought, will be a garrison to guard your hearts and minds in union with Christ Jesus. Let me read that one more time. And then, you gotta pray that way. The peace of God, which transcends all our powers of thought will be a garrison to guard your hearts and minds in union with Christ Jesus. Now let me say this. I'm gonna talk to the teenagers about this at summer camp. But you will not find peace like the peace of God anywhere in this world. People think that the peace of God, the joy of God, the love of God, oh, that's nice, but you know, I'm gonna go out in the world and find it out there instead of finding it in the kingdom of God. It doesn't exist. It's a cheap imitation and it's temporary. It's temporary. I mean, why do people smoke pot? Uh, if you used to smoke pot, don't raise your hand and tell me why, but. <laughs> why do people drink alcohol? Why do people smoke cigarettes? They know, they know, they know. They don't need, uh, uh, they don't need anything on the package that says this causes lung cancer. Everybody knows, everybody knows. But why do they do it? To try to find what? Peace. But it's temporary. Everybody say, it's temporary. temporary. And I have never done drugs myself, but, you know, people say who have done drugs, you know, that, that first time you do drugs, you feel this ecstasy, and then from that point on, you're chasing that for the rest of your life. It's temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. Turn and say, it's temporary. it's temporary. So you need peace. Amen. And let me say this also. This is why we guard the peace of God like nobody's business here at Faith Christian Center. Right. That's why we don't put up with drama. That's why we don't do drama. This is why you're not gonna come in here and bully us around, and you're not, gonna make, you're not gonna get us anxious or worried about something because we, have, we go to the Lord by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, and therefore we have the peace of God. Amen. And we guard the peace of God. And you need the peace of God because you need the peace of God in order to make the next right step. You need the peace of God. You know, it, you know, anybody that deals with worry or fear, man, it'll eat you up quick. I mean, it'll eat you up quick. And you can, go to, you can go to worrying about something small, and then all of a sudden, man, it's this massive deal. And how many of y'all know worry is a habit? Worry is a habit. Oh, you better check. Does what the Waterburger give us everything we need? Oh my gosh! You ever check? You better check. First of all, they probably didn't. 
But just stop being anxious. Anxious, anxious, anxious. All right, now I'm gonna throw it down now. So this is why parents make bad decisions with their kids. They get anxious. They get anxious. They get anxious. Well, you know, my kid's mad at me. Or, you know, we've heard this. You know, my kid doesn't really fit in here or my kid doesn't really like it here. Listen, buddy. Do not be anxious. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Peace, peace, peace. You don't think we, had, we don't think we haven't had challenges with our kids? I got some stories. <laughs> but we're not gonna share them tonight. But not only that, not only that, I know Austin and Christina are very polished now. But like I said on Sunday, I, I saw Pastor Gina Sue in private and in public. When I took over the youth group, Dr. Austin Lingerfeld was in sixth grade and coming into the youth group. And I'm here to tell you, you know, you can't, you can't be anxious and parent correctly because you're gonna make some bad decisions. You need the peace of God. I need the peace of God in order to know what the next right step is to take. Right? What's that next thing I need to do? What's that, what's that next thing? You know, how many all know? How many all know? If you press too hard, it's not gonna work. How many all know? You're anxious, about, you're anxious about finances. How many of y'all know you just need to be calm, cool, and collected and get back to work and let God bless the work of your hands? Amen. You give, you sow seeds, and you go to work. Everybody say, we give, we give. then we go, to work. we go to work. A lot of people don't like that second part, but that's what you gotta do, right? You can't just give and not go to work. You gotta give, and then you what? Go to work, and when you're at work, you're just thanking God. You're just thanking God. You're just thanking God. You're just thanking God. Philippians 4.19 is, is true in my life. 2 Corinthians 9.11 is true in my life. And God, I'm so thankful for it. I'm so thankful for it. I'm so grateful for it. I'm so thankful for your provision, God. His provision is, it almost seems too good to be true. It almost seems too good to be true. But you've got to put the word of God into practice. You gotta go to him. You gotta ask him for what you need or what your desire is. And you gotta be grateful for it. You gotta be grateful for it. And then when you do that, everybody say, when I do that. When I do that. Say, I got the peace. I got the peace. And when you got the peace, brother, I mean, there ain't nothing like it. We have peace in our home. We have peace in our home. And we're keeping it. I said, we're keeping it. And no one's gonna come into my home and create havoc or drama. And no one's gonna come into this place and create havoc and drama because we, got, we are too focused on building phase two. And we are too focused on getting you debt free. And we are too focused on getting some of y'all into a home we are too focused on seeing some of y'all find a godly mate. We are too focused on seeing your children grow up innocent in the Lord. We're too focused. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We're too focused, staying in agreement with you to see your dreams and your desires come to pass. We're too focused on winning the lost to have any of that drama or be anxious about anything or worry about anything because we're too focused on what God wants us to do for his kingdom. Amen. And that's why we have peace. That's why we have peace. The peace of God, the peace of God. Let's read that, let's read that one more time. And then when you pray this way, the peace of God, 
which transcends all our powers of thought. It doesn't make sense. Everybody say, it doesn't make sense. sense. We'll be a garrison to guard your hearts and minds in union with Christ Jesus. Because we have his peace. Everybody say, thank you, Father God. For your peace peace. that is in my life, my my family's life, life. this church's life. life. We are not worried. We are not not anxious. anxious. But we're standing on your word. And we thank you, Father God, God. that every single need need exists to be met met. and every single desire desire exists to be fulfilled by you. you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all believe that tonight and receive that tonight?